Namaste Angels is going to be a client reading for one of my return clients um, for readings, healing, all of that. Um, just talks, girl to girl, woman to woman, all that kind of stuff. Um, it's going to be a little different because I am wanting to give her as many answers as I can, sort of specific answers to specific things. Um, one being what um, sort of phase or wave uh, which she may be a part. Now, you guys don't hear me talk about that often, although you have heard me talk about it and I've even done readings that, especially when I first started, um, that were sort of by group, um, at least every now and then, just to see what was going on among the Illumin, what was going on among, um, you know, the second wave, what was going on around the, the third wave of, of elect. And um, she's sort of like wanting to see where she's at right now. And so I'm going to ask and I'm going to use um, the ace or one, two and three of summer to represent the different um, waves. In the scriptures, for one, I mean, it's in the, it's in the prophecies that there are three waves. Um, but there's a few different places also in the scriptures, and you guys know that who watch me, <coughs> that I connect uh, the journey to the scriptures. And when I say the scriptures, I don't mean just the Bible. Um, the Islamic scriptures as well, the Hebrew scriptures as well, as other, you know, in addition to other ancient texts and things. And so there's a few places where 72,000 and then another 72,000 are spoken of. Uh, Jesus, for one, himself dispatches 72,000 disciples and then another 72,000 disciples, two by two. This is in the scriptures. So when you, you, you know, figure out what you think that means to you. It's couples um, making up the 144,000 illumin. Um, and then, of course, he had, you know, other others who went after that those would represent the elect. Similarly, for example, Moses. For before Moses went anywhere with anyone, his sister Mariama took all the women and prepared them, all the divine feminine, like, like this Mariama is trying to do now. Um, you know, to the extent that I'm able and with those uh, I, I'm privileged and honored and humbled to work. Um, so she began working with them. And then those of you who watched, I don't remember what I called the reading, but I did a whole reading and first discussion about Mariama um, last year last year around the time of the exodus <laughs> um which would have been around the time of passover and easter so we can look that up but in any case um she took the feminine and then she reunited them beginning with her own parents uh, after she had um you know worked with the feminine prepared her and so there was the illumined but ultimately, around 600,000 people left with Moses on the Exodus. So that was the Illumin, and that was the other 500,000 elect. So um, there go your phases. They're, just, they're spoken of, also broken up in, in pieces too. Um, the Book of Enoch and, and other places. So enough of that. That ex explains from where it comes. Um, it does, for me, it does not come from a place of twin flame. And you show me one scripture, I dare I challenge anybody who watches this video to show me one piece of scripture, one ancient text where it describes twin flames, mentions anything about twin flames and details them leaving in groups of two or well, there's 144,000 of them. Those are not quote unquote twin flames. They're again referenced, um, again, not just in the Bible, not just in the book of Revelations, and certainly not just in Revelation 7 and 13, but in several other places, um, and, and not just Christianity. Christianity doesn't, doesn't own God or the Illumin. And they're referred to as the Illumin ones, the lighted ones, the elect ones.
So that's of whom I'm speaking right now. All right, so all that said, let's get into T's reading. I'm gonna call her T, because I'm gonna call her video T. All right, let's do it. I've also got some frankincense oil and a note to the universe burning on both of our behalf. So you see me laying, I don't know which order I'm laying them, and in addition to that, I'm going to mix them up again. This is like five card money. I'm from New York, so, you know, and I was born in Harlem to be specific. So <laughs> this is from my natural habitat. <laughs> taking a piece of carnelian, which is one of Isis's favorite stones. Blood of Isis is also carnelian, but it's carnelian that was found specifically in the Red Sea. And it is um, a gemstone quality as opposed to just like rock. I'm putting it on that one. So, <laughs> not the third and not the second. This will be the first. I mean, she's got things coming up. I'm arbitrarily sticking them back in the deck. And then I'm going to give it a quick shuffle for something else. She's got this fire energy that keeps coming up. The princess of spring is the page of wands, essentially, um, and would represent the sign of Sagittarius for me, but could also, of course, have something to do with Leo or Aries or maybe even Scorpio um, and the planet Jupiter, which rules it. Or maybe the planet Mars, which rules um, one of the other fire signs, Aries. Um, or maybe the sun, <laughs> which rules the sign of Leo. Speaking of the sun, I've just opened to the sun. So maybe that's what it's about. There's a Leo involved here somewhere or the energy of Leo. Your plans will work out well, bring you happiness, prosperity, and success. You'll garner the recognition for your accomplishments that you so richly deserve. The sun actually in the tarot represents the sign of Sagittarius. But again, the sun, Earth's star, the sun rules the sign of Leo. But now I have sort of Sagittarius on Sagittarius energy. So very likely having something to do with that, the sun and the four of autumn. Because it's about living a life of extremes or seeing things in black and white terms, consider, for example, whether you're spending too much versus hoarding your wealth or giving too much emotionally versus building up walls that keep people out. Four of autumn. It's the high priestess, which represents the sign of Gemini for me, or water signs. It can be water signs as well. Um, this is a time to pause and to reflect, not necessarily to take action. Trust your spiritual gifts as nothing is hidden from your divine intuition. The high priestess is someone who is extremely wise. And a lot of that comes from the fact that she's extremely observant. So she's looking around, she's paying attention and she's, you know, to, to details and she's picking up on the little things even that often go often overlooked and she retains that information and she doesn't necessarily say anything about it. So this is the extremely Gemini trait. Um, she doesn't necessarily mention it and, but she may use it one day to her advantage. So it's not something that she just leaps out and does. She doesn't jump out the window, you know, with information and blow herself up. She uses what she knows very wisely or doesn't. And that's what you're guided to do here too. Also to pay very close attention to your intuition. So 
what I'm going to ask I was just debating if I was supposed to shuffle and I because I felt like I was being told to shuffle some more and maybe I am um but what I'm going to ask is what can she expect okay I'll shuffle some more one second <laughs> Very nice. The overall energy is the Prince of Summer. Romantic, flirtatious, introspective, and enchanting is the Prince of Summer. A deeply emotional and probably romantic experience will sweep you off your feet. Things can move very quickly during such a whirlwind encounter. So stay balanced and make decisions with both your heart and your intellect. The Prince of Summer, if he's connected to this card in terms of zodiac is a pisces cancer or scorpio or someone likened to those traitor attributes it can be sun moon or rising as well so what i'm going to ask is what can she expect to happen with regard to her union what progress can she expect to be made with regard to her union in the near future Let's say over the summer. And this will be the fall. And this will be by the end of the year. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the romance cards, beginning with retreat. It's time to disconnect from the world. And opening to make the effort. Great love is worth taking the steps you're guided to take. Now, she has been guided to do some retreating. And that can, this can be talking about just that. You know, I know she's been guided to take a, a trip, you know, a vacation, get away. Um, I feel this is the romance angels telling her to go forward with that. Retreat. And love yourself first, which would also be connected to that. Your self-respect makes you more romantically attractive. Love yourself first. Playfulness. To recapture romance, allow your inner youthful spirit of fun to shine. So this is call, calling for her to lighten up, which her uh, retreat and spending some time alone and or with nature could help her with. Lightening up her spirit, letting go of the heavy baggage and things that she's been carrying, you know, with her. Also going towards loving herself first. And not worrying about the connection because that's going to be there. And there's a strong magnetic attraction there. Love yourself first. And lastly, calling in your soulmate. Your prayers, affirmations, and visualizations help bring you together. Love yourself first. Stay optimistic about your love life. Positive thinking and faith is what's going to bring you that romance. Overall energy is codependency. Addictions are affecting your romantic life. So we want to work on breaking those. And again, that um, the love yourself first and perhaps even the retreat um, and the lightening up. I think they're all, you know, intertwined. They all go together. Um, and those other things will go toward helping you to rid yourself of any codependent behaviors, circumstances, relationships, anything toxic attached not necessarily having to do with substance abuse but absolutely that can be involved um what she can expect you know by the end of the summer or over the summer by the end of the summer and then the fall and by the end of 2018 If it means anything to you, it might now, might might not now, um, 
and maybe it will later as well. Um, before I started your reading, September, that song September, do you remember the 21st night of September? That came on um, in another room in my home and I was made to notice it, even though I was watching <laughs> Annabelle Creation. <laughs> I was made to, you know, bing, like my, my concentration was broken and I was directed toward that. And I said, okay, that's attached to the reading. I don't, I don't know what it might mean to her, if anything. So if it doesn't now, maybe it will later. All right, so what can you expect um, between now and the summer, by the end of the summer, to, in terms of progress? Aww, I love that. The two of spring, your vision, creativity, and dedication to your cause have brought you great success. In fact, it may be in your best interest to get a partner to assist you in your endeavors or to expand the number of people helping you. The two of spring, of course, is the two of wands, which is the divine union card of the tarot. So that's wonderful for that reason. But this can also mean for you, since this is, um, you know, can be considered the general <laughs> reading portion, um, you know, although I, I, I was focusing on the relationship and the union when I laid all of them, um, you know, these are general tarot cards. This can also be things that you have focused on. You are beginning to manifest and this is calling for you to have faith too. So an increase in faith over the summer, positive, continued positive thought, whatever was on your mind when you were in the one phase or stage, which is manifestation you are bringing into your life over this period of the summer. It's coming true. And so continued faith is required. When we get up to th number three, that's when we have the three of wands, the three stakes in the ground, and more patience is sometimes required, but we, you know, we actually physically begin to see the manifestation, um, like really taking root in terms of, of that. But you can start to see it here with two, um, but your two is definitely guiding you to continue to have faith. So what specifically in the area of romance, um, although this too can certainly be the area of romance, can she expect to progress over the summer, by the end of the summer? Very soon. If you clearly decide what you want, it will come to you now. So you're guided to do just that. And that can certainly mean this partnership will come to you once you get yourself together, including what it is you want. What um, can we expect to happen between the end of the summer and the fall, over the end of the fall? The nine of autumn, your success has brought you financial security and the reward of much deserved time off to enjoy your own company. You may suddenly have a brilliant idea for a business or self-employment opportunity that will be very successful. The night of autumn um, can be a card of being single. You may be alone um, during the fall. That's a possibility when this card shows up and may, it may be dependent upon what this card says. Um, but it can, be, it can relate to relationships too. In both cases, whether a person is single or in a couple and if they pull the nine of autumn, uh, it, it represents success and worthiness as well as worth. So, you know, that you are deserving of this. You've put your work into it and you've sort of earned it. And now you are um, enjoying the fruits of your labor, as they say. But also the value of the connection of the relationship and how it is something that is um, priceless, basically. Specifically in the area of romance. Express your love. Go ahead and make the romantic gesture. So perhaps you will in fact be alone, but get presented with an opportunity. Um, you know, to make 3D contact and further your relationship. Because I'm, I'm seeing the beginnings of it definitely here. 
with the two of spring. I mean, that's like indisputable and undeniable. And we've got 11 here too, with the two sitting here next to the nine. Winter. Before the new year, what can we expect? Release or death. It's time to release the past and to move on to something new. This ending is the first step on the way to a happier future. Release or death is the end of a phase uh, or chapter in your life. It's also can be connected to spiritual transformation. So this can be um, um, elevation for you and promotion for you and, and ascension for you and, and him as a couple. And it's also letting go of like whatever was negative and didn't work and we're not doing that stuff anymore. You know, if there's any like forgiveness that needs to be exchanged, any resentment, you know, that we need to drop and not just for toward one another, but in your relationships in general, because all of those things affect you, familiar relationships, friendships, all of the stuff that is, has manifested into the form of an obstacle to love and specifically your own and your own um, romantic relationships is of what you're going to need to let go at that time. And a Scorpio may be involved. I don't know the divine masculine's um, um, zodiac sign in this union. And, but I believe T, if I remember correctly, she's an Aquarius. Yes, she is. And in, specifically, again, in the area of romance, Heart-to-heart -heart conversations. Now, see, here is where it's initiated with the expressing the love, making the romantic gesture. And here we have the heart-to-heart -heart conversations where we honestly discuss our feelings with each other. So you have this to look forward for in the near future. I wanted to be able to do that to you. Now we'll do a spread from the perspective of the masculine. Beginning with relationship, which is a card similar to what we've seen already, the retreat and the nine of, of autumn, nine of earth, uh, spending time improving the relationship with yourself so that you can have better relations with others is what relationship is about and opening to spiritual growth. And aren't they one and the same? Because this is what leads to this. And it's kind of like the same way the cards were laid in the other spread. We went from the nine of earth to death. Um, which I said was spiritual transformation and spiritual growth. And here we're going from this energy, which I said is nine of earth like to the spiritual growth. So confirmation or reconfirmation relationship and listening, which this card represents your sign for me with this big star here. The star in the tarot represents the sign of Aquarius. But of course, this is also paying attention to the messages, listening to your intuition, uh, all those dreams that you get from your divine light cleanses and all that stuff, write them down um, so that you can go back and refer, you know? Also, you're guided again to listen to the message about work, improving your the relationship with yourself, getting to know yourself a little better, like yourself a little better, love yourself a little better, and act like it, like by, by treating yourself, by loving yourself first and treating yourself to those things that you know you need and deserve, doing that, listening to that guidance that you've been given and continue to be given and, and um, start working on those things. Relationship and meditation. Because that in meditation would be included in that. You know, this is going toward your healing. That's what you're being guided to do, to work on yourself. And that's, again, going to improve the relationships and not worry about the union. Because here's another confirmation. We already had the two of wands. Uh, now moon tree, which is a card of sacred marriage. working on the relationship with ourself to improve that of our union. Relationship.
and Trilogy of Light. So this is one, really the, the primary reason or should be that we're all working toward. I, I, I try to remind people um, not to get ahead of themselves because this is not having like a, a, this journey is not about having like a really cool boyfriend or girlfriend or husband or wife. It is primarily about becoming nearer and dearer to the universe. And we are fortunate and blessed, um, honored to be given somebody to travel part of the way um, with us to that end. And the overall energy is goddess. And also it's like goddess of the moon because we have this moon here. So both feminine energy and the moon is a represents feminine energy as well, you know, as does the goddess. But for me, further to feminine energy, it gets more specific than that. And the moon represents feminine energy of surrender. And when I see these naked beings, to me, they also represent surrender too, because when we're stripped bare of all the superficial stuff, and you know, you know, we're at our most vulnerable. That vulnerability equates to surrender, right? And allowing the universe to do with it, do with us what it will. This is the overall energy for you here. And we do have a um, full moon that uh, perhaps you should focus and make sure that you make your new moon intentions. That would be on Wednesday, June 13th. We have a new moon, 22 degrees Gemini. So it's a very brand new start. Um, fellow air sign for you. That should help too. To, you know, really get extra benefit from that. Okay, divine feminine. The masculine about the feminine. Himself. And the union as a whole. Overall, what the masculine would have the feminine do, contribute, surrender toward the union, what he himself is willing to, what the universe, oh, okay, well, uh, maybe the universe is going to have them to do two things, so we'll put that there, because that card laid itself, I didn't do that, and the outcome. Divine Feminine, Universal Heart. So this is, of course, Jesus Christ, the healer um, of the ages, the healer of all time, the Divine Masculine of all time. Um, this is with whom you um, are to work if you're not already toward your healing. Call on him, talk to him, seek him, and you're going to receive guidance as to how to proceed in different areas. And sometimes that will be through other people. You know, we're not, we don't expect to only get like downloads and stuff. You're going to receive help and answers to your questions and to what you've sought in the form of other people sometimes too. Um, the masculine about the feminine. Golden path. He sees um, her and, and recognizes and honors and respects her need for healing and is happy that she's doing it. And the golden path is really awesome because for me, um, it's very much like, and it has been since the first time I looked at it and picked it up, very much like the yellow brick road. Very, very similar. The yellow brick road at the end of it, the reason that Dorothy and the Tin Man and the Lion, they were all trying to get to the end of it, was they wanted to reach the Emerald City. So I've always envisioned at the end of this golden path is the Emerald Ray. And that is the ray of healers and healing. That is where we would find Jesus the Christ. That's where we're going to find Archangel Raphael at the end, um, you know, to... to revel in our success and to tell us we've you know come to an end of a phase similar to the energy of that death card that showed up before the masculine about um himself 
right now. Meditation. So he too is going through this process of healing. The cards that turned up, love yourself first and all that wasn't necessarily just, you know, for you. Could be for, for either or both. And I think both. And the union as a whole, right now from the perspective of the masculine, message from afar. Very nice. Um, the two of you receiving individual messages from the universe and things. Um, and telepathy and dreams between each other. And maybe, at least according to the other spread, um, soon some actual contact as well. 3D contact. Overall, reflection. All right, so there's some things that you need to decide, like what you're taking with you. We talked about being lighter before um, and leaving like the heavy baggage, lighten up, dropping your baggage. What from your past do you not need to carry with you to your future? Okay, what should be allowed to die? Again, getting to that energy of death. What should you absolutely take with you? What have you put down maybe that you shouldn't have, that you need to pick back up in order to, you know, straighten up and fly right? That's what the reflection process is about. Looking on your past, looking around at your present, what's missing? What's too much? And then how do those things relate to my goals and my future plans? I may need something now, but do I plan on taking that with me? Or should I begin a process of um, learning how to sort of um, separate myself from these things from my present too? What would the masculine have you drew toward the union? Love. Very simple. Just love. Just that, you know, continue on your path, your golden path toward your healing. Uh, he understands. He gets it again. He appreciates it. And, um, you know, the, trust, faith that the connection exists, well, you know, regardless of whatever else is going on. Two. Energy of two. That's the energy of faith as well as partnerships. What is he willing to do here? Again, <laughs> retreat. Um, work on healing. We have this angel in a meditative pose crossing this feminine in a meditative pose. Again, this card represents the sign of Aquarius for me, similar to the listening one. Um, because there is the star here. It also um, represents like earth signs, since she is sitting in like a grassy knoll surrounded by flowers, uh, and as well as the other air signs. There's all this um, air around her. And of course, those, so those would be Aquarius, Libra, and Gemini, with Libra and Gemini both being ruled by Venus, which this card also represents for me because Venus, again, rules two air signs as well as an earth sign, Taurus. This card tends to represent fire signs for me, and I, we started out with that energy of fire of Sagittarius in particular, um, but, you know, Sagittarius, Leo, Aries, all attached to the message from afar as well. And thinking along those lines, this message from afar could also be the, the, a gift from Jupiter. Jupiter, the planet of expansion, growth, the planet of, they say luck, I say karma, you know, but positive things happening. Jupiter is like, the energy of the Knight of Wands, you know, coming, showing up to save the day of the Wheel of Fortune. All of a sudden, awesomeness is happening, you know, where maybe it wasn't at all before. All of a sudden, everything can change with the energy of Jupiter, you know, for the super positive. What would the universe have the two of you do? And remember, it laid this card itself. Ooh, celebration. This is going to be about the reconciliation. That right away, that was there. And what was the one that I had? Aww. 
sacred union. I should have picked this one up first. We would have known exactly what we were celebrating, but I, I felt it anyway. I said it's about the reconciliation. It's about the union coming together. And this is what the universe would have the two of you do, sacred union. Boom. There you have that. We'll do one more spread because I wanted to. I know you. Were, where did this car come from? I don't know where it came from, but it's here. And I got to tell you, heaven on earth, it kind of goes with reflection because it talks about the need to vacate a space. There's something onto which you are holding that has to go. And there may be more than one something. It could be, you know, whatever that codependent situation was. Um, there's an obstacle that's there that you have control to remove it. And that's what you're guided to do in order to make room for the new. So again, this is connected to that energy of death as well. Allowing a phase to end, not con trying to control and hold on to it. Allowing a phase to end so that newness can happen, right? The energy of death. Um, and Scorpio and Pluto, which rules it, is about not just an ending, the, a beginning too, rebirth as well. I don't know where the card came from though. <laughs> it's just bizarre. All right, so let's do... Let's do another spread here, beginning with the Ace of Air, which could absolutely be your energy as an Aquarius, but not, you know, not necessarily. This could be Mercury. This could be Venus too. Brilliant new ideas and inspirations, seeing the truth of a situation and maybe a challenging beginning. So uh, the Ace of Air, yes, is the, it's about a new beginning like the other Aces, but this one, when we see it, we are sort of clued in that it was hard getting here. It hasn't been easy. And it might be a rough and or rocky start, as they say too. Like, even though we're, we're getting the new beginning, it might not, you know, get off easily either. An opening to balance, another card that represents the sign of Sagittarius in the tarot. I don't know what all this is about. Maybe the divine masculine is the Sagittarius. Um, and again, there's also the connection to the planet Jupiter, which gives us those blessings of expansion and, and rewards us for our hard work and our good karma. The need for balance and moderation, cooperation and compromise. Wait for perfect timing. Balance is temperance in the traditional tarot. Balance for me as does temperance also represents your sign. I don't care what people say about the tarot. This is an angel um, standing in a pool of water, holding two vessels, pouring water back and forth between them. He's a water bearer. That's Aquarius. <laughs> so, especially he, uh, here opposite the ace of earth, um, of air rather. Ace of Air. And the Ten of Earth, a very happy family life, financial security, and finding magic in the little things in life. Ace of Air. And the Ten of Air. This is like after the Ten is an Eleven or the One, the Ace, right? Um, so this is like the end of difficulty. And then we just, we started with the Ace of Air. So this is like reconfirmation of that. Well, here's the Ace of Air. It's going to be opposite. Reconfirmation that something difficult is ending uh, and we're getting this new beginning here. It's the end of a difficult situation. Embrace the change and expect things to get better now. Somebody may even be recovering from an addiction. So this can be connected as well to that energy of codependency, which was your overall energy before with the romance angels. That is a block to you. So whatever that, that is, um, can also be connected, the Ten of Air, to the energy of like betrayal and, and hurt too. Ace of Air. And the Page of Water, who's intuitive, sensitive, artistic, and friendly. A new person enters your life. A relationship begins a new phase and you have heightened psychic abilities. Page of Water for me. Um, tends to represent a child or a Pisces, which is the uh, more youthful of the water element, but of course can be um, a Scorpio or Cancer as well. And the six of air, the, look at things from, things are looking up. It's the end of a difficult situation. This is the third message to that effect. You had the ace, you had the 10, you have the six now. You may even be taking a trip. Page of water, no cut.
And it's the two of Earth now. Too much going on at once. There's a need to make a decision. Consider a more playful approach. So the second message um, to that effect too, the two of Earth is about the need for balance. Also an indication that there's a decision that has to be made. And for me, as you know, it can be about deja vu from hell too. And constantly coming back to the same place and forgetting, figure, feeling like we're, um, we're just always having to start like from zero. Like I'm here again. Why can't I get past this spot? Um, so it may be that as well. Overall energy is the dreamer, which represents the planet Mercury for me with Archangel Metatron. A leap of faith. Follow your dreams. That leads to unexpected opportunities. Um, the dreamer, because it represents planet Mercury for me, also represents the signs of Gemini and Virgo or air and earth. Um, the dreamer is the fool in the traditional tarot. It's all about a brand new path that you hadn't walked before. A fresh start. Oh, something just jumped out. And it is the Knight of Earth, speaking about a Virgo. The Knight of Earth is loyal, dedicated, honorable, and kind. Time to buckle down and get things done. Honor your commitments. You have a guardian angel. The Knight of Earth is perhaps a Virgo, a Taurus, um, or a Capricorn, or someone likened to these traits or attributes. And also is a knight that always reaches his goal, um, although maybe not as quickly as we would like. He can be paced. Right? He's slow and steady, wins the race as far as he's concerned. Also it can be about financial and or material abundance coming your way. Crowning the masculine here, it's the king of earth. He is generous, professional, responsible, and practical. A successful time, confidently accept opportunities you're offered, you have the Midas touch. The king of earth, like that knight that was here, is a Virgo, Capricorn, or Taurus, or someone likened to those traits or attributes. He is surrounded by this energy of two again, partnership, uh, Gemini, and faith. Um, also, and, you know, anybody else's duality too. The high priestess um, is a Gemini for me, or a water sign. Listen to your intuition. Have patience and consider carefully what you want before acting. And the wheel, the, um, the energy I spoke of with uh, the planet Jupiter, a time of positive change. The situation suddenly moves forward and fortune is on your side. The wheel um, is connected to the planet Jupiter for me and therefore Sagittarius, which it rules, but also the other, um, the fixed signs rather, which would be Leo, which this might represent the queen of fire, um, Scorpio, Aquarius, your sign, and Taurus. The queen of fire is confident, warm, intelligent, and graceful. Stretch your wings and fly. Don't underestimate yourself. Assert your independence and creativity. The queen of fire is a representation of the divine feminine in the tarot. She's one half of that two of wands. And surrounding the feminine, it's the eight of air, an illusion of being trapped, a lack of self-confidence and being afraid to take action. This is similar to um, the devil, and or the codependency card from the romance angels it can be about addiction it can be about being stuck in a codependent situation feeling stuck you're not really you can get yourself out of it and um you are being guided to get yourself out of something and the universe is going to help you it's going to like sort of pull you out slowly the world with archangel michael a job well done joy contentment and gratitude and a path toward enlightenment the world can have something to do with a third energy and or third person uh too that person can be the universe the world for me is not about having the you know the world being your oyster or having the world at your feet like it is for many uh it is about the universe helping you out of a situation that you you know, you know, you should have gotten yourself out of already and you didn't. And now it's stepping in. That's part of the karma. Right? That's like a gift from Jupiter. Again, crowning the seven of air plans and revision more going on than meets the eye and poor timing. This can be about lack of um, confidence, lack of esteem. It's, it's the energy of joy stealing, but we can rob ourselves of that, you know, by things like allowing ourselves to, you know, feel trapped, like we can't, you know, relieve ourselves of a situation, for example. Um, at the root, the page of earth who is scholarly, dependable, patient, and successful. Good news about financial matters. 
wanting to do something more challenging and maybe even a new area of study, the page, like the knight and the king, is a Virgo, Capricorn, or Taurus, and also an indication of uh, financial and or material abundance on its way, as is the wheel again, too. And at the heart of the matter, the page of water intuitive, sensitive, artistic, and friendly. A new person enters your life. A relationship begins a new phase and you have heightened psychic abilities. Again, they can, this page of water can just represent an offer of love or new love or reconciled love, like beginning again, fresh love, honeymoon phase love, you know, all those wonderful things. Um, and can be a Pisces, Cancer, or Scorpio as well or you know if not it's the energy of that or someone likened to those traits or attributes awesome Further to the masculine, it's the two of winter. Procrastination and worrying about what others will think is blocking you from making a decision. If you're torn between your own desires and someone else's, follow your inner guidance. So you can be letting somebody talk him out of um, his wants and desires, which is not good. You guarantee, um, guided maybe to learn a new trade or um, go to school or you know work on something for you. It's the perfect time to learn all you can about returning to school, taking a seminar, conducting research, whatever it is. And this can be toward a relationship too. do your best work. Whatever you put your work into, do you the best you can. And the law of attraction will bring you prosperity, um, you know, in the area in which you're working. For the masculine, a worth waiting for. So even though that night of um, earth energy is slow and steady wins the race, you know, it's still coming. It's still happening. And for you similar guidance stay optimistic about your love life keep that energy of two up keep that faith up positive thinking and faith is what's going to bring you the romance further to the masculine he's going through spiritual growth and healing just like you so if you're wondering what's happening and it's all going toward this new beginning that you know comes as a result with birth this is a new start. It's also the energy of abundance as well and creativity. And from the angels to the masculine, nine of water, your wish comes true, concerns fade away, and you have a love of life. But I think that the spread that we have here for him depicts just things, good things happening for him in his life with the wheel, the high priestess, and the king of earth. You can't really go wrong. And lastly, for you, representing the sign of Leo, or perhaps another uh, fire sign, Aries, um, Sagittarius and also a, another 11 for you here strength major arcana card strength great inner strength release harsh judgments instead exercise some forgiveness and compassion I hope that you have enjoyed your reading and find it helpful namaste angel